What's going on, guys? It's Crystal once again, and I just want to get back on here and give um, another thought-provoking word on, you know, friendships. I want to talk about friendships, or as TLC put it back in the day, what about your friends? And it's funny, it was like a um, popular song that they did back in 92, the same year I was born, and, you know, just very dope song, so, you know, check it out in your leisurely time if you know. You're concerned. All my old school people know what that song is about. <laughs> and, they, you know, they know that song. So I'm going to just get into it with some scripture. And it's just going to be one scripture that I read. John chapter 15, verse 13. John 15, verse 13. Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And, you know, that's just one verse I want to kind of talk from. First of all, I just want to start off by saying friendship these days is very rare. You know, it's very rare to find these days, you know, real friendship, people who want to truly, um, you know, be your friend and be a, not only just be your friend, but be a real friend. These days, you know, people becoming friends and linking up is just all about, you know, what we can do, like, um, you know, the people that go to the club or, you know, you know, you go to the bar, you have some drinks or, you know, or let's just, you know, do this. But, you know, to me, friendship, I believe, goes a lot more deeper. And it goes a lot more deeper than, you know, for those who are um, Christian, you know, just going to church. I think that, you know, it should be one where, as you know, you can talk about, like, intimate details of your life and, you know, be able to feel free to um, express yourself in a real way. To me, I think it should be about, you know, closeness, honesty, realness. You know, you could do things together and, of course, have fun with it, but, you know, it's about the heart of the matter. It's about getting to the heart and, you know, being like, girl, you know, I got to call you up. I got to be for real about this. Or I need you to pray on this with me, you know, especially if you have Christian friendships. But real friendship is hard to find these days. You know, a lot of times people want to cover up, you know, who they really are by doing things. And, oh, let's just do this. Let's go here. Let's do it. Let's go here. and Let's go there. And let's just do this. But they don't ever really get to the root. And the realness of, um, you know, just being honest and real as people and saying, hey, you know, I got this struggle. I go through this. And, you know, people don't have the intimacy of friendships. They have the activity of friendships and they go out and they do things, and which is nothing wrong with that. That's cool. And that's fun, too. You know, we can go miniature golfing or bowling, but can we be for real and talk? You know, can I tell you what's really going on in my life without you, um, you know, feeling like you want to get away from that or, you know, judge or anything? Because one thing I believe is that a friend, you know, you know, doesn't really judge you, but they do have a good judge of character about you to the point where they can just help you and just be honest and for real with you and let you know, hey, girl, that ain't it. Or, man, you know, you was wrong for that or, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, friendship is rare, you know. That's why, you know, it's a good thing when you do have that relationship with um, Jesus that, you know, he's the best friend that you could ever have. He's your bestie for real. And it's just such a beautiful thing. He's a friend like no other. Friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Ooh, that rhyme. <laughs> but yeah, this is something to um, keep in mind. It's funny, I was going to do a post about it yesterday, but I didn't. And I probably will today, talking about um, how a best friend is more than just somebody who is just, oh, oh, that's my friend, and we kicking, and we just cool all the time, and you know, that's your, you know, best friend, but a best friend, in my definition, it's funny, I was coming home from work in the car, and, it, you know, God gave it to me. A best friend is really somebody who brings out the best, is the friend who brings out the best in you. They're more than just somebody who's, you know, you cool and that you kick it with. You know, that best friend is the friend that brings out the best in you. The person that's going to say, nah, we, we don't need to do that tonight, or, you know, let's try and do this. Let's try this activity, something decent, something different you know a friend's supposed to take you away from your rotten self and you know the worst parts about you and bring you into a better you bring you into that better um personhood of you you know bring you into a better person you know with yourself and you know kind of just you know take you away from that that's why it's good to be friends with people that's the opposite from you too you know maybe personality wise maybe you're more shy quiet you know and inward and the person who's more outward and you know alpha will do you some good because they'll bring you out of that shy shell. Or maybe if you're too outward or alpha, maybe the person that's shy will bring you in a little bit more, 
and you know kind of help you um, be rational and you know thoughtful you know you know just kind of tone down some you know when it's time to tone down not that you got to tone down completely but when it's time to tone down so you know friendship is like it's a beautiful thing and like you know what the bible says in john 10 and 10 the enemy comes to kill steal and destroy and we're living in the last days and times and that's why friendship is so hard to find and it's so rare because you know the enemy that's one of the ways that's one of the things he's stealing from us all saint or sinner because the rain falls on the just and the unjust you know that's one of the things that and one of the ways he's stealing from us too is real friendship even in you know church you can't really find real friends too you know because you either find people that's going to gossip about you and talk about your business and act like they're going to pray and you know it's just you know something else you know friendship is hard to find you know anywhere and i think it's hard to find because people truly honestly they don't know who they are and because they don't know who they are they can't help you with who you are and the things that you struggle with in yourself personally and it's just like you know nobody just knows who they are they have this ideal in themselves that they kind of follow they've been looking at you know social media too long and they think well i have friends on there and it's really just people that you you know chose to follow you and that you choosing to follow it's not really real friendships there's only like two or three people that might be real out of all the 500 to a thousand friends that you may have on facebook or followers that you have on instagram so it's just like something you know definitely something to think about it's like man that's one of the things thank you holy spirit that the um enemy you know he's done he's stolen real friendships and i'm not saying that there aren't any real friendships out there i'm sure there are definitely but you know that's just something that's one of the things that the enemy stole too along with you know having real um relationships you know between male and female you know that's you know also kind of shot too you can't find you know people can't find nobody no more girls can't find a special guy to be with guys can't even find a special girl to be with because you know we don't just talk bad about the guys all the guys acting up you know these girls are acting up too and a whole lot of ratchetness and it's just you know horrible just not what god you know intended for this world to be but it only shows that this is the end times too when it comes to and the end times is affecting us in every way you know of course inflation you know and it's also affecting us friendship wise and relationally wise the devil is stealing from us socially and it's kind of a good and a bad thing it's bad because you can't find what you need you know relationship wise but it's also good because if you have any kind of um you know background about god and knowing who jesus is then it's also what should propel you to get closer to him and to um make a friendship and a, re a close intimate relationship and fellowship with him because you're that empty because you can't really find what you need you know you know in friendships and relationships so yeah it's just like man so yeah, um, a best friend is somebody who should just be someone who makes you feel good, you know, all the time. You're always kicking it, it's always feeling good. But a best friend is somebody who brings out the best qualities in you. That's what the best friend should be. So you can have more than one best friend if these people bring out the um, good qualities in you and not the worst. Because some people, they don't even realize it, but they want you to stay stuck in your rut. You're around some people that, you know, they want you to stay stuck in those broken relationships, the broken cycles of your life, the broken mindsets that you have and carry because, you know, they're stuck and they don't know who they are and they don't want you to really truly honestly know who you are. And because of that, you know, they help you stay stuck. And so it's just, you know, something to consider and think about, you know, are your friends bringing out the best in you? Do they challenge you and convict you at times? Do they, you know, help you think and see life from a different perspective? Do they um, take you to a whole nother world that's good, something clean and pure and positive? You know, something to think about. And sometimes, and then you don't have to do inventory on your friendships. You're going to have to go through your phone and see how many phone numbers you in that's in there that's like people who are mm -mm, not so good, good a friend. You know, people who gossip and constantly talk about people all the time. You know, those are friendships you should probably be leery of and, you know, kind of have a short arm relation short arm or a short distance relationship with them not short distance but still 
don't be around them all the time. I don't want to mess up the phrase. You know, keep it long distance or something. Just keep it long distance. Love them from a distance. There's people that's constantly gossiping and being negative, and you don't want to be around that. And I think that's why, as hurtful as it is, and I've had to kind of realize this and remind myself of it yesterday, you know, God will take away certain friendships and, you know, people out of your life because he knows the toxicity that is in them. And he don't want you being around that, especially if you are a Christian and you're his and you belong to him. He don't want you around a bunch of negative people that's bringing you down and constantly talk about somebody else and constantly trying to manipulate you and, you know, just trying to use and things like that. You know, he wants the um, best to come out of you. So he's going to give you friends that's going to bring, bring the best out of you. You know, God is a guy who don't want you shutting him out of um, certain areas of your life. He wants to come in those areas of friendship. And that's probably why you don't have friends, too. Or you don't have that relationship, that boyfriend or that girlfriend, and, you know, turn it to a future wife or husband. Because, you know, um, you know, God wants to keep you set apart. Like I said in the post earlier this week, he wants to keep you set apart. And, you know, you know, he wants to be the one to um, deal with you, heal you, love on you in this season of your life before he brings, you know, anybody else. Because you got to seek you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. And that includes, you know, real good friend, good, true friendships. You know, delight yourself also in the Lord and he shall give you the desires of your heart. So that's just something to take in and think about, you know, become friends with God. And I think that's what God wants and is looking for in these last days too. you know, become a friend of his. You know, be close to him. get close to him. Allow yourself to be saved and filled with his Holy Spirit so that, you know, he can show you the way of life. But just, you know, think about it, you know. And I'm going to go ahead and end this video. You know, just think, do my friends bring out the best in me? Do they, um, you know, you know, are they truly my bestie? Do they bring out the best in me? Do they, you know, help me become better and take me to another place and another plane in life? So I'm going to go ahead and end this, friends. <laughs> I love you all. Be blessed. Be encouraged in Jesus' name. And have a wonderful day. What about your friends? <laughs> What's going on, guys? It's Kristen once again. And I just wanted to do a part two to the um, What About Your Friends video I did earlier. You kind of just expand a little bit more on the things I kind of forgot to talk about. So I'm just go ahead and get into it. I'm going to reread the scripture for those who didn't hear it in the last video. It's John 15, verse 13. It says, Greater love hath no man than this, that a man lay down his life for his friends. And I just want to kind of explain that a little bit, that when it comes to real love and real friendship, you know, and this can even apply to um, those who are, like, married or, like, you know, you know, you know, soon to be married and things like that. And that's just basically about the spirit of sacrifice. You know, greater love hath no man than this, than that a man lay down his life for his friends. Now, when it says lay down his life, it doesn't necessarily mean, like, do what Jesus did and, like, you know, just, you know, do the sacrifice that he did by dying on the cross and taking all the lashes and beatings. It's not necessarily saying that in a literal context of it, but instead, it's what's, what's, what it's saying is sacrifice, being sacrificial in your friendships and relationships. Like, um, you know, are you willing to be there for your friends when they're um, in need? Um, you know, the kind of friend that you're looking for, you know, to be there for you and, um, you know, make you feel like you're counted and make you feel like you're um, important and a priority. Are you willing to do that as well with your friendships? And are you willing to be sacrificial? And that's just the question you have to ask. And that's, you know, mainly what's about sacrifice, you know. Can they um, pick up the phone and call you at a certain time and, you know, just talk to you about whatever's going on in their life, you know? Are they able to, you know, you know, are you able to be there for them when they need it? And, you know, that kind of thing. So sacrifice, you know, our relationship with God, you know, our relationship with people should, you know, reflect, you know, the relationship that God has with us, has with us, and that's being sacrificial. And so it's just, you know, something to think about. This is just, you know, a quick part two to that, you know, talking about, you know, friendships and all of that. So, um I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that and, you know, just make sure you have a sacrificial spirit in your relationships 
and you know, make sure you're willing to give and make sure that it's also being reciprocated back to you because it's not enough for you to just give, give, give and nobody's giving in to you and giving back to you and say giving in. So it's just something to, you know, think about and consider, you know, let it be reciprocal, the love and the sacrifice that you give when you lay down your life or yourself to somebody, you know, in friendships, you know, marriage relationships, you know, parental, you know, relationships too. The parents, they sacrifice and, you know, did good for us all our life and we have to, you know, give back to them in that um, manner too. So just something quick to think about. Um, just end it at that because I don't want to keep going on and on, but you know, make sure that you're giving as well as, you know, you know, it's easy to take, but make sure you're also giving in your relationships. And, oh, wait, before I even end this, I just kind of wanted to talk to you, too, about the, um, you know, uh, what comes to, when it comes to friendships, you know, how you shouldn't also compromise to have a friendship either. Because I've been in those spots, too, where, you know, compromise, have friendships, and, you know, said and did things that really weren't me. You know, and this is from like when I was a kid on up, you know, from school on up into my adulthood. And there would be times where I would just, you know, kind of compromise, you know, what I thought. You know, it was a little less as an adult, but still there would be times where I'd be like, mm. so I just want to like, you know, encourage you don't, you know, do what I did in the past. Don't compromise to connect. Make sure you always hold a standard and, you know, do what it is that you believe in, you know, do what it is that you believe. And, you know, more than people liking you, you'll have people's respect when you um, do that kind of thing. So it's just something that, you know, keep in mind and think about, you know, don't compromise to connect and then make sure you're also giving instead of always taking, taking, taking in relationships. So I'm going to leave it at that and, you know, hope you guys have a good um, rest of your day in Jesus name. Love you guys.